Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, welcome to the channel, hopefully you guys enjoyed the clips as much as I enjoyed making them. I really love this build, if you guys have seen my demigod build, which is in the top right hand corner of your screen right about now, it's using the exact same set, so the only thing I've changed up are the skills. I know what you guys are thinking, oh wow, another build by Horcrux, well, this one's really fun. Um, I will say my demigod is better overall, but this one is more fun. Like when you see the 15k, 16k crits roll off of your Molten Whip, man, it, it feels great. So without further ado, fellas, let's get into the actual build. So uh, running around 900 recovery, uh, everything is uh, completely unbuffed here, 30% crit chance. So just go ahead and uh, kind of buff things up for you guys so you get an idea. So we're at 5,500 uh, spell damage. This goes up to uh, 6k, a little bit above 6k well, with continuous attack. We get 9k spell pin. Again, we have like... 31% uh, we should have 31.4% crit but I did try a different mythic with this I'll explain that in a moment crit resist around 2k uh, back bar resistance is uh, looking pretty good 30k into 24k and this only goes up with some of the sets that we have as well so um, what sets are we running you guys already know we're running burning spell we dual wield we have a nerd home sword uh, potentially you could run sharpen to get a little bit more damage out of this um, I wasn't going to change up the entire build just to min max this you do get about one and a half percent more damage if you're unsharpened compared to nerd hone so that's up to you and then we also have a mace for the extra spell pin with a charge trait on this as well just to keep up our burning stats which feed into our combustion passive which feed into our sustain so we do have a flame and a shock damage enchantment the reason i do this is because every time you lie attack you're going to inflict them with a burning stats effect from the flame enchantment and then if you attack with your offhand, the shock enchantment, you're inflicting a minor vulnerability literally every single time because our chances to apply status effects are really, really high on this build. So uh, that's why I have uh, these enchantments as is. You could potentially run instead of shock, you could run disease enchantment if you wanted to do that. I played around with it a little bit. It is pretty cool, but I like seeing that the big dick crits, you know what I mean? So back bar running for familiar with the demigod set, Iron Blood. It, it's probably the most broken set in the game, guys. I yeah, I, I can't stress this enough. Any build I ever run will have Iron Blood. I played this game for seven years. There's a reason I use this set is because it is overpowered. It is way overperforming. It's completely broken. I mean, it really is, and that's why I'm using it. So, um, back bar, we, uh, it's defending. Uh, you can run powered as well. And then we have a weapon damage enchantment for our burst. We usually lie attack on our back bar before we go in for our burst combo. This 350 spell damage is actually more like 500 um, when uh, all these spell damage stacks mul multiplicatively. Next set we're running is Magna Incarnate. Um, I won't say this is best in slot, but it's definitely like top three monster set you can run on the Mag DK. So um, the one piece is pretty awesome. It gives you magic recovery as well as stamina recovery and then the two piece when you heal yourself or a group member um, you get this little bouncy ball that gives you a minor courage minor resolve which gives you 200 spell damage as well as a uh, 3k uh, spell resistances and the uptime on this is like 60 percent so it's really good too um iron blood again um, our weights um currently on this build is four two one and that's just because I don't have a light magnet incarnate. Ideally, you would want to run 511, but I just don't have the correct helmet uh, at the moment of making this video. When it comes to traits, um, roll traits that fit your playstyle. Um, Impen is never a bad trait because of all the, the, the crit proc builds out right now. And I also run uh, a lot of well fitted as well because I like to roll dodge and have block. Now, if you run a sword and board, you could probably run, or an ice staff, you could run, um, you know, sturdy. But since I don't block all that much on my DK, um, I typically run well fitted to avoid damage. So the mythic, mythic item we're running, I actually tried it out a little bit, is the Snow Treaders. So the downside to Iron Blood, even though it gives you the 30% resistances, it does snare you by 50%. So, and then other snares stack on top of that. It's pretty annoying sometimes. If you run Snow Treaders, the most you're ever snared is 50%. And you completely shit on other DKs. Like if they try to run Talons, they cannot, if they run Power Lash, th their build is done. No one can Power Lash you with Snow Treaders. You're never gonna be off balance, um, which is a pretty uh, pretty good item to have, to be honest. Um, it does offset, again, Iron Blood a little bit, and we can completely offset it. You know, I'll explain that in our skills in just a moment. And then for the jewelry, we're running um, Iron Blood and then one trainee. Ideally, you'll want this to be infused spell damage. And then I do have one um, infused uh, cost reduction. Um, if you run, uh, which I forgot to go over the food, sorry about that. Be with Sugar Skulls, you're running the Lover. 
Now, if you wanted to run like the Atro here and then replace uh, this infused magic ray cost with a split damage glyph, and you could do that as well. It's, it's entirely up to you. Um, I feel that this is how I sustain best. You know, I'm, I'm rocking like 900 recovery. And I've never run into a sustained issue, not once, not, never in my entire time running this build or really any mag DK build. You don't need recovery, so just just don't stack in recovery on DK and go. It's better to go cost reduction and crutch off your burning stats effect that combustion passive. So um, there are the sets. Uh, let's go over the skills. The skills are uh, quite a bit different from our demigod build. So we have engulfing flames. Um, let me go over why I have this the way it is. So I have engulfing flames. Burning embers and flames of oblivion on the front bar. If you want to run engulfing on your back bar, you know, to each their own. But I like having all my dots on the same bar instead of flip flopping between bars, especially with the lag and serial. You, you get caught in a bar swap and like it usually is screwed. And the reason I have everything here on the front bar as well is because of the Seethen Fury stacks. So, um,. If you try to use engulfing on the back, but your whip's on the front bar, you're not going to get that stack. So that's why I have engulfing, burning embers, flames of oblivion. By the time you apply all that, you already have a max seething stack, a whip going, and you just one tap whoever, really, to be honest. We have fossilized. Now, you could argue running shattering rocks, but you need some sort of control. I'm not running talons on this, which is really unfortunate. There's a flex spot here on the back. You can change uh, channel and acceleration for. I'm a flex spot, possibly talons, but you need some sort of control, you know, after you're stunned. So that's why I'm going to fossilize. Um, you can go with shattering rocks. That's fine too. Uh, Molten whip again. Um, this gets up to uh, 24,000 on tooltip, and that's uh, that's without continuous attack. So it it can possibly you know go even higher than that, like 25, 26k. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, you're spammable on this build. Do not spam whip. This is your kill shot, your execute, whatever you want to call it. Your spammable is Flames of Oblivion. Now they changed Flames of Oblivion to now hit three people, right? So as a spammable, this is a direct target. This is doing uh, roughly 9k damage. This has a very, very, very high chance to apply the burning status effect, which I will cover in a separate video on each skill and what are the odds of each skill applying the burning status effect is really high it's like a 50 percent chance so you're hitting three people with this you can only imagine that every time you use this ability you're going to inflict people the burning stats effect which gives you a thousand magicka back due to the combustion passive and the skill only costs 1500 so essentially the skill costs you 500 to spam um it it's amazing because what you can do if you're line of sighting, you can stack your seething furies up with flames of oblivion. And when you pop around the corner, you can line up a heavy attack, leap in the molten whip, and you can delete most people below like 27k health, like easy. And then of course we run a uh, ferocious leap on the front bar. A tooltip does seem a little low, and that's because of our CP. We're kind of um, focusing on. I mean, it's 19k. It's it's not too bad. We're kind of focusing on a single target, and not necessarily on our leap. And I will get into that uh, here in just a moment. So we'll cover the skills on the back bar. I'm running a degeneration for a major sorcery buff, um, coagulating blood, um, rapid regeneration, volatile armor, and again, this is your flex spot. You can swap this out for uh, channel acceleration, you can swap this out for talons, you can swap this out for draw essence, you can swap this out for wings, eruption, they're all good alternatives, it just really depends on how you want to run it. The reason I'm running channel and acceleration, um, the only reason I really need it, yeah, the major expedition is great. Um, but I'm mainly using it for the times three duration on minor force just so you can get those bigger crits off So let me explain how snow treaders and Major expedition kind of cancel all iron blood. So Iron blood slows you 50% okay snow treaders you're not gonna get slowed any more than that major expedition boosts your movement speed by 30% and so now you're only slow by 20% well you have skills um, passive in your um, skill line. I'm not for sure which one it is, but whenever you hit people with your flame attacks as a DK, you snare them by 20%. So that's 50% movement in your favor and then 50% movement speed against you. So essentially everything cancels out and you're just unsnareable, essentially. And you can keep up with people pretty easy. Now you can't sprint combat, but yeah, whatever. And then we have corrosive armor for our back bar. Um, this, if you really want to get some big juicy crits, you pop. You're corrosive, and then you have a max seething fury 
whip going, man. It this this thing hits so hard. You guys saw in the clips I was hitting people for like 15k crits without corrosive. Imagine popping corrosive and having a 100% spell pen during the duration. You can probably get this up to almost 20k crits um, if you line everything up correctly with your magnet incarnate and your burning spell weave. So um, there's that. And then kind of last thing I really want to emphasize is the potions that we're running. Um, if I can find them here, are the minor heroism potions. Um, they uh, you make these by combining dragon's blood, dragon's rum, and columbine. Essentially, it's a tripod potion, but instead of getting the health, you get minor heroism instead. And minor heroism on a DK for the entire duration of the potion buff is absolutely amazing. This helps with your sustain a lot, guys. Like a lot, a lot. And of course, you can run essence of speed. And, you know, just really anything you want. Just tailor it to the way you guys want. This this is. A template it's not made for you guys want to copy verbatim even though you can if you want so when you come over to CP tree um, we have ironclad uh, down here we got fighting finesse uh, this increases your critical damage and also your critical healing by 10% uh, this is really good because we're all inning on the crit uh, we have mastered arms which increases the damage or direct damage attacks and also rank deadly aim actually increases the damage on your single target attacks now this really only buffs uh, molten whip you could argue that it would be better to run uh, biting ores, but I really like seeing the uh, the big crits on Molten Whip, and you get a lot of messages um, saying you're hacking. Um, I, I got like five yesterday on stream. It's pretty funny. So uh, when we go into the Red Tree, we're running Relentlessness, Sustained by Suffering, Pain's Refuge, and then Survival Instincts. Green Tree, um, I should... If you want to run the expensive potions like I do, please spec into liquid efficiency so you at least have a 10% chance of getting the potions back because they ain't cheap, fellas. And then a warm out passes with Gifted Rider um, should be your other passes just for, you know, quality of life. And uh, yeah, that about does it, guys. Um, do not forget, you know, a huge shout out to my uh, patrons and also my YouTube community members. Thank you guys so much for you know, supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. Couldn't be doing this without you. I really mean that. If you want to be a part of the Ku Crux clan, that's what we're coining it for now. Um, I, it's like $2.199, something like that on the main page of my YouTube channel. You get access to like uh, emotes and uh, tiers and you can spam during you know, uh, chat and all that stuff. Plus you get Discord perks, you know, some cool things like that. So if you guys are interested and want to help support the channel, there's that. But the best way to support the channel is with a simple like and sub and throw down a comment. You know, you can say Horcrux sucks. It doesn't matter. It all helps the YouTube algorithm if you really want to uh, help me on the channel. So with all that being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoy and you have a great rest of your evening. Peace.